All right. Welcome in, everybody. Happy Wednesday. Welcome to Beckoning the Broncos. I am your host, Kim Becker. We will make sure that we've got everybody in here, and it looks like we do. How is everybody doing today? I know it was um a tough couple, or I should say 24 hours, a tough couple of hours, a, a tough 24 hours. It hasn't been a couple days yet since the Broncos did play on Monday night, but Welcome to everyone in that is joining us. I believe we are live on all of our channels. So thank you so much for joining me this morning on Beckoning the Broncos. Like I said, I'm your host, Kim Becker. We've been looking forward to this Wednesday for quite some time so that we had some actual Denver Broncos play to talk about. Not the game I was hoping to talk about. However, however, I went through a roller coaster of emotions in the past 36 ish hours, which I'm sure the rest of you did as well. I am sticking with the 24 hour rule when it comes to the Broncos, to the NFL, to hangovers, when it comes to wins and losses, I'm sticking to it. So the 24 hour rule means that we can dwell on this for 24 hours. We can reflect on the negatives for 24 hours and then we are moving on. So that is what I am doing here. Now, if you did see the stream topic, it says that I will be comparing uh, rookie head coaches in week one, which is something that I will do. So don't get me wrong. I'm still going to chat about things that happened in week one. We're still going to go over a couple of things since this is my first chance here to get in front of you guys and really kind of dive into how I feel. However, I will not sit here and be negative for the entire podcast because um, we're moving on. We're moving on. So with that said, we are um, going to dive into things here. But again, welcome, everybody. Thank you so much for being in here. I see you all um, going going on in the chat, and I love it. And I, I agree with a lot of comments out there already. I saw Jeremy pop in here before we even started. He says, good morning, Kim and Scott. After a little reflection, are we feeling better after Monday night? I definitely do. And I do too, Jeremy. And I'm glad you were that first comment because i that's where I'm going to start. Um, like I said a little bit ago, I went through a roller coaster of emotions when it came to this game, when it came to Coach Hackett, when it came to Russell Wilson. And at the end of the day, I know everyone was blaming Coach Hackett for game management at the end of the game and going for that 64 yard field goal instead of putting Russ in. I saw thousands of tweets comparing what Russ makes to what Brandon McManus makes. And why would you put Brandon McManus in? Why wouldn't you put Russ in to go for the fourth and five and try to get him another chance? I understand. I totally get it. I see where everybody is coming from with that. But at the end of the day, Coach Hackett got in front of everybody yesterday in his press conference, on his Monday press conference, or Tuesday press conference, the day after the game. And he said, he opened it up and said, yeah, we should have gone for it. We should have gone for it on fourth and five. So all of you that saw that and just read that context, because I know there were tweets going out. I know people were resharing that video with just that tweet that said, oh, Coach Hackett thinks we should have gone for it. If you watch his actual press conference, he says that, and then he tacks on at the end of that statement. He says, yeah, of course we should have gone for it now that we missed the field goal. And that's what this is. This is football. These things are going to happen, okay? So, of course, you're going to look back at the play that did not go the way you planned and said, oh, yeah, we should have done something else. Of course, that's what's going to be said. So all of you that are saying, oh, my gosh, Coach Hackett, I don't believe in him anymore. I don't I don't think that he's the right choice. You know, I don't like what he did. He's too soft. Da, 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 da. We could go on and on and on. But he said, yes, we should have gone for the field goal now looking back because we missed or we should have gone for fourth and five now looking back with Russ in there because we missed the field goal. So, I mean, that again. This is when the 24 hour rule comes into play. This is where we, you know, can have that one hangover and then we move on because it's just not how these things work. It's not, you can't, you're not going to have a head coach go out in front of everybody the next day and be like, oh yeah, I made a huge mistake. Like, uh, I wish I could have changed that because it's not how this works. That's not what he said. So don't take it out of context. So that's just where I wanted to start here because I was guilty of it as well. You know, when I read those tweets, I was like, no, he did not say that. But if you go watch his actual press conference and watch the full video, he does say at the end of that. Yes, of course, we should have gone for the field goal. Or Gosh, I keep saying that. I'm so sorry. Yes, we should have gone for it on fourth and five because we missed the field goal. Like, So it's just, yeah, looking back on it, when it didn't go your way, of course, you're going to wish you did something else. Jacob Foster over on Facebook. Hello. Thank you so much for your support. As always, I know that you are always in here at Beckoning the Broncos, so I really appreciate you popping in afterwards today. Um, so that was my rant on the whole Nathaniel Hackett hate. I've seen a lot of it. I, I do think... Like Jeremy said, people feel better today, which I, I hope so. You know, it's it's Wednesday morning if you're listening to this live. Like I said, it's been about 36 hours since the 17-16 loss to the Seattle Seahawks. And 
We had that 24 hours to dwell on it. Of course, of course, there were mistakes made by the Denver Broncos. I am not downplaying that at all. There are things that need to be fixed. I do think the defense started out very rocky, along with the offense, really. But the defense picked it up in the second half. You know, they they knew what mistakes they were making. They shut the Seattle Seahawks out in the second half. There were zero points scored on Seattle's side. So I do think our defense stepped it up. Um, you know, a lot of people have been contemplating and talking about how Nathaniel Hackett did not play any of his starters during preseason. I completely agree with that. Yes, it was a tough game to come out on. Um, I do have a friend that was at the game, and she said she had never heard anything like it. She said the noise was absolutely insane. Everyone came to that game wanting to cause a ruckus for the Denver Broncos and for Russell Wilson um, specifically, and that that goal was definitely met by the Seattle Seahawks fans. So shout out to them. Um, you know, I love to see that. I love to see a fan base that is really loyal to their team. Of course, I – did not like hearing all of the boos. I I do think, you know, at the end of the day, Russell Wilson gave his heart and soul to the Seattle Seahawks. So that was just kind of a bummer to me, but I wasn't expecting anything different. And neither was Russell Wilson. If you listen to what he said after the game, you said, you know, I wasn't expecting them to throw in a round of applause every once in a while. It was, you know, that was to be expected. It's a hostile environment there in Lumen Field. But he did say as well, he gave everything that he had every single day in the 10 years that he was with Seattle. So you know, this is sports. This is why we love it. This is why we love football. This is why we are so passionate about this game. It's because um, the fans and the fan bases and the rivalries and the trades and the switches and whatever it all may be. It's a, a fun thing to um, to be a part of when you're on the winning side, of course. But um, no, again, they have some things that they need to iron out, the Denver Broncos, but it's not its not the end of the world. It is just the first game or the 17th game, as Nathaniel Hackett said. You know, he's going to hope that he can look back on this whole season and say that was our, our worst game. You know, going to make every game going forward our best game. And so I just – I'm really excited to see where these guys pick up next week. I think it was a big wake-up call. Um, but, you know, another thing, too, just before I wrap up with the Hackett stuff – he also said multiple times in both of his press conferences right after the game and the one on Tuesday that Russell Wilson wanted to do this. Russell Wilson is so good that we thought this. Russell Wilson made this call. So he did make comments a few times about the end of the game, how they went out there and they burned, what was it, like 30 seconds or something like that um, before they sent McManus out there to kick that field goal. And Hackett said, yeah, Russ wanted to try to get him to jump off sides. And that was my initial reaction when I was watching the game. I was like, what are they doing? I was like, oh my gosh, he's trying to get them to jump. He's trying to get them to jump, but why are they in the huddle for so long? Why isn't he not why are they not on the line of scrimmage already? Um, so I do think that was a little discombobulated, but Hackett did say Russ wanted to burn the time so that he could try to get them to jump off sides. And he said that made me nervous because I was I was thinking, you know, it's so loud in here. What if we jump off sides? So hearing him say that, I do think that Russell Wilson had a big influential pull on some of these calls. And, you know, he played in Lumen Field for a decade. He knows what the environment's like. He knows what the noise is like. Of course, he's never been on the other side of it. However, I think that they put a lot of trust in him to make some calls. And he probably made some other calls throughout the game that we are not going to hear about and that we don't know. But I just don't think that this was all Nathaniel Hackett's decision. So everyone's saying, oh, he's the worst coach. He's the, you know, he was wrong. Da, da, da. It's, it's just coaching. Da, da, da. I don't think it was all coaching. Um, there were a lot of things that went into play and the noise being one of them, Russell Wilson's calls being one of them. So I just think that he had a lot to do with the decisions that were made out there as well. Um, and of course, it's unfortunate. It didn't go the way that any of us were expecting or hoping. But um, you know what? This is it. And I see all of you guys over there Thank you, Robert, saying one out of 17. Everyone take a deep breath. Absolutely. Colin says it's not the end of the world, but we'll never be able to hang with the other teams in our division like this. Very good point, Colin. We definitely will not be able to hang with the AFC West if it continues this way, but I don't think it's going to continue this way. I think it was one game that was a serious wake-up call for these guys. It was probably the one game they did not want to lose, um, but they did. And so now we'll just see how they pick it up and how how they move forward. So, Definitely, we are not going to um, abandon them by any means. Um, but I also think this is another wake-up call, which here I am trying to convince myself that everything is fine. And I'm about to talk about this. But um, I was looking at rookie head coaches. 
in week one. There are 10 rookie head coaches. One has an asterisk on it, and that is Josh McDaniels with the Raiders because this is not his first time being a head coach um, in this in this league recently. But um, 10 rookie head coaches, okay? I'll rattle them off for you here. We have Lovey Smith with the Texans. We have Matt Eberflus with the Bears. Doug Peterson with the Jaguars. Brian Dable with the Giants, Kevin O'Connell with the Vikings, Mike McDaniel with the Dolphins, Dennis Allen with the Saints, Todd Bowles with the Bucks, Josh McDaniels with the Raiders, Asterisk, and Nathaniel Hackett with the Broncos. So <clears throat> looking at all of those head coaches and their teams in week one, a lot of them did very well. A lot of W's. One tie, Lovey Smith with the Texans, tied with the Colts. Unbelievable there. What a weird, what a weird situation. We'll get into that also because a weird situation that I want to talk about. Lovey Smith with the Texans tied. Doug Peterson with the Jaguars had an L and Nathaniel Hackett with the Broncos had an L. That's two coaches that lost this year or this week. Two rookie head coaches lost this week out of the 10. <laughs> Nathaniel Hackett with the Broncos and Doug Peterson with the Jaguars. And I do not need to remind all of you, but what went down with the Jacksonville Jaguars last year and what Doug Peterson was picking up when it comes to that unit there. Um, so that's Doug Peterson, not a rookie. Well, yes, but recently we're talking about recent. Okay. So again, Josh McDaniels is also not a rookie head coach, but he's on the list. So some couple asterisks there. Sorry. Um, so that's just what I'm looking at right now. Recently is that Nathaniel Hackett has to, now kind of be looked at in as a rookie head coach that lost here in 2022, um, along with, we'll, we'll count Josh McDaniels and Doug Peterson, I suppose. But um, so three of them had an L out of the first 10 rookie head coaches. So I don't think that this is going to speak for the rest of the season when it comes to how these head coaches and their teams will play. But I'm sure he. this is not a game that he was expecting to lose. This is not a game that he wanted to lose. This is not a game that a lot of people expected or foresaw Nathaniel Hackett losing. So I'm just very curious to see how this plays out. But I think this is a big wake-up call for Coach Hackett just when he has to look at the analytics, which I say this, and he probably will never even look at the analytics. He doesn't care. They're not – or they tell us that they don't care. You know, they're just going to focus on the team and focus on winning. But I just thought that was very interesting because you look at, you know, Brian Dayball who picked up the Giants unit and how they were, you know, kind of not doing – not doing so hot last year. And, um, you know, Mike McDaniel picked up the Dolphins, of course. Everyone was really excited to see him as a head coach. And um, – I'm sorry. Yeah, everyone is in there saying it shouldn't it shouldn't say rookie head coaches. It should say first year head coaches. You're right. First year head coaches. I was looking at just in the last several years since Josh McDaniels with the Broncos and whatnot. But you're right. First year head coaches. I'm sorry. My bad with the the wording there. So first year head coaches with their units. Let's talk. Let's talk it that way. Um, so Josh McDaniels with the Raiders and. Obviously, he's been in the AFC West before, but Doug Peterson with the Jaguars and Nathaniel Hackett with the Broncos. So those 10 first-year head coaches here in 2022, we shall say that. Um, it's it's just interesting to see because you, I think there was so much hype on Nathaniel Hackett's first game with the Broncos and the Seahawks. And, you know, of course, there was a lot of spotlight on the Jacksonville Jaguars last year and what was going on with them and their head coach and their situation and everything there. So it's like there was a lot of spotlight on these situations. Even Lovey Smith with the Texans, you know, with everything that we had going on with Deshaun Watson and whatnot, they were in the national media and the spotlight a lot as well. So it's interesting to look at some of these teams and see that there was so much pressure on them and that they did not maybe perform to the expectation that we all had. So I think that that's it's not a good foot to start off when it comes to these guys and the team and especially the situation with Russell Wilson and heading back to Seattle for game one. But I do think it will get better. So my my point is this. Yes, he is is not. It was not the best first look for the Denver Broncos, but it is one game. We have seen teams start 0-1 and, and absolutely skyrocket. I mean, look at the Packers last year. Look at the Packers this week. With Aaron Rodgers, they had a terrible game, game one again. It can happen. It's fine. So we're going to brush this one under the rug and we are going to move on. But I just thought it was interesting to see that it was really just 
couple teams there that um, had a loss with the first year head coach here in 2022 because I'm getting – no one likes that word rookie anymore. But I get it. I get it. So anyways, we'll we'll move on from that. But um, just a, a lot to look at. And I think it was a lot to look at a fluke week for a lot of teams, however, this week one situation. You know, like I said, we've got – the Packers who are at the bottom of their division right now. We've got the Vikings on top of the NFC North and the Packers are literally at the bottom after week one and the Lions are in third. So um, that, that one speaks for itself right there. I mean, it's week one, right? It's one game. We're now analyzing everything off of one game. We're looking at all of these teams based off of one week, which I believe was a very interesting and weird week when it came to the NFL. The Seahawks were the only winner in the NFC West. Unbelievable right? The Rams, the Cardinals, and the 49ers all lost. That is not what we all saw coming in week one. So this this whole situation is something that is so hard to analyze after week one. And after just seeing how all of us were expecting these teams to perform after the preseason, we had some teams that did play their starters and we had some teams that didn't. I mean, look at the Cowboys. They were the only team without a touchdown in week one, which I thought was a very interesting quote I saw or a very interesting stat I saw on NFL Network. So, I mean, just a weird situation for a lot of these teams. Dolphins, they're the first in the AFC East. I know that a lot of people were expecting the Dolphins to do pretty well under Mike McDaniel. However, I've heard he is a brilliant coach um, and a brilliant guy there. Um, the Bengals are the last in the AFC North. The reigning AFC champions are last in their division after week one. Gosh, that game was interesting. And I know that it's uh, a lot of people were chatting about that one, you know, between the Steelers and the Bengals and what was going on through overtime and all those kicks, which was crazy kind of across the board in the NFL, which brings me to the Texans and the Colts. The Texans and the Colts are winning the AFC South right now. They are in that number one slot in the AFC South and neither one of them won. They tied with each other. Like what, what was this week? This week was weird. That is what I'm going to now say and just move forward with everything from there because this week was a fluke week. I'm not counting it. I mean, I am, but I'm not counting it as towards how the rest of the season is going to go for a lot of these teams. So just some crazy, crazy things going on in that week one. And now the 24 hours is over and we are going to move forward against the Texans, which I know that the Broncos are favored to, beat the Texans, but I also don't think this is going to be a game that the Broncos are going to push under the rug now after last week. I mean, you heard Justin Simmons and Jerry Judy speak in the locker room after the loss to the Seattle Seahawks and both of them, you know, they were ready to move on right then and there. And I don't think that the Texans are a team that we're going to shrug, shrug under the rug here. Um, so I am very, very intrigued to see what happens on Sunday, of course, and how these guys come back out. Because at the end of the day, it just didn't look like they were as hungry as they needed to be. And I know, like I said, there were a lot of factors that went into that. You know, the starters not having a lot of gel with each other because of not playing in the preseason, new coaching staff, the noise in Lumen Field, all the hype and the pressure surrounding this game on Monday. So a lot of factors went into Monday night's game that will not go into a lot more games this season. That was definitely going to be probably one of the biggest challenges they would face here in the 2022 season. So I think it is all up from here, you guys. I'm not going to I'm not going to dwell on it. I'm not going to hit the panic button. I'm not going to freak out as I don't think any of you should as well. Of course, we're all bummed. This isn't what we expected. This isn't what we wanted to see out of a team that we have been so excited about all off season, but it is what came to fruition. It is what happens. And need I remind you that one team does have to lose every game. So here we are. I appreciate you guys all being here. I appreciate you guys setting me straight with my wording as well. I will just say that. Like I am I said the wrong rookie. I like the, the first year head coach coming in there. You guys giving me comments. Um, so my bad on that one. But I appreciate you guys all. In the comments here, I know that there's a lot, a lot going on that you guys are commenting on, which I <laughs> agree with. Colin says maybe the networks will wake up and stop giving the Cowboys so many primetime games. Man, the Cowboys have just had it rough lately, haven't they? Poor Dak Prescott. I do really like Dak Prescott. I have a lot of respect for him as a player. So bummed that this keeps happening to him. But yeah, let's let's hope that maybe um, we can get some teams that are more deserving in there, i.e. the Denver Broncos, if they perform better this next week. Because, yeah, another primetime 
man, the Denver Broncos hadn't been in prime time like that in a long time. And that's the, um, but it was a good game, wasn't it? It was definitely entertaining and it was a good game. Um, we've got Dr. Van Nostrand over there on YouTube. I think this is the first time I've seen you. So welcome. Thank you so much for being here this morning. And he says, when I saw the schedule release, I knew I didn't like playing in Seattle week one. Wish they would have gotten their feet wet in the preseason a little with how much new they have. Yes, it's definitely a big factor there. And it's definitely a subject that a lot of people have been contemplating and talking about is should we have played some of our, our starters here on the Denver Broncos? It's possible. Um, you know, it's all it's that risk reward thing. It's really hard to say because, of course, you just don't want to see any of the Denver Broncos get injured in the preseason. And of course, that we know that was kind of the logic behind not playing them. But yeah, I mean, you you now, you know, it's the same thing. You look back now and you're like, yeah, maybe they should have played their starters, but it's only because they lost. If they would have won, we would not be saying that. So it's just kind of the, the way the cookie crumbles here. But it's um it's definitely something to think about heading into next season if we if the Denver Broncos still have the same coaching staff and whatnot. So, um, you know, here we are. <laughs> oh gosh. Well, thank you guys so much for being in there and being in the chat. And I appreciate you guys always hopping in and giving your two cents. And I'm, I'm glad that some of you do have the feelings that you have. And I'm glad that some of you, you know, are making sure that we can all chat about this and have and understand each other's sides. That's why we're here. Vincent, thank you so much for your support, Vincent, over on YouTube. I really appreciate you being here this morning on Wednesday. He said, I lost respect for John Fox when the third and seven went on third and seven with Peyton Manning and the game on the line. He chose to run the ball. I'm afraid our next boy genius may be of a similar ilk. Okay. I mean, Vincent, I totally can see your point. Um, you know, it's it's these these one calls that can really make make or break you as a coach. I do believe, and I don't think that this one is quite going to break him. Um, I mean, third and seven, yeah. When you chose to to run the ball with Peyton Manning, but Peyton Manning had I don't know. I mean, I I guess we can we can compare Russell Wilson to Peyton Manning. I guess I still think that Peyton Manning. Um, probably stands, sits on a little higher pedestal right now where we're at and in, in, in our lives in 2022 than Russell Wilson does at the moment. But yes, um, third and seven with Peyton Manning and not throwing the ball. That one definitely is a, a dagger to the heart. And I do think that yes, Nathaniel Hackett could have let Russell Wilson try to make that play five yards, right? It's only five yards when you look at, when you look at it and he's got a, the stature that Russell Wilson has, the arm that he has, the experience that he's had in that field, you know, on that stadium playing. So I understand, Vincent, that you lost respect for him there. And now you're a little bit hesitant about um, boy genius, quote unquote, who is Nathaniel Hackett. But, you know, they have said that Nathaniel Hackett is the quarterback whisperer. I did read an article where Bucky Brooks called him the quarterback whisperer back in January. Um, which I thought was interesting. So it is funny now looking back at it, if he's the quarterback whisperer, why didn't he use his quarterback on that fourth and five? But again, it just all goes down to, they had spoken to Brandon McManus and Brandon McManus said, if you get to that 46 left hash, I'll kick the field goal. And that's what they did. And that was their plan. And they stuck to it. So I just, I, I understand your feelings, Vincent. And I agree that it's, it doesn't make us all sit well. You know, our stomach feels a little bit iffy after those calls, but Let's give him a couple more chances. This is only the first game that we've seen him out there as a head coach on the sidelines. The only the first game that we've seen him out there with Russell Wilson being his head coach and, you know, communicating with him throughout an entire game. So I'm going to give him one more chance, but I understand your hesitation as always, Vincent. And thank you so much for your opinion and for your two cents on that one, because yeah, I'm sure there are a lot of people that agree with you right now and are having the similar feelings and that is completely warranted. But I think we see how, these next few weeks go. So um, it was it was just week one, you know, we'll see what happens. But hey, none of us wanted it to, ha to end this way. And I am not downplaying that either. We were all really excited and hopeful that we could talk about um, some different things today. But you know, there were a lot of positives that I do believe um, that will come out of this game. And you know, Jerry Judy got into the end zone for the first time in a long time. And that was pretty cool. You could tell how badly he wanted that touchdown when he made that catch and he just bolted and I thought that was really fun to see because you can tell how hungry he is this year for what he hasn't had in the last couple of years. And I think um, that we're going to see a lot more of that moving forward 
um, the Russell Wilson, Judy, G Jerry, Judy connections. Um, but it doesn't mean anything unless we get the dub. That is a quote from Jerry Judy after the game. He said that touchdown doesn't mean anything unless we get the dub. And um, so I know that it's he's hungry for more. And we're going to see more coming out of that combination there. So appreciate you guys being here so much. Again, um, we'll see what happens here as, as the next few weeks develop. But let's not quite hit the panic button yet when it comes to Nathaniel Hackett and when it comes to what we've got out on the field here with the Denver Broncos. Because I do believe – that we will see better from here. It can only go up from here at this point. Um, I hope crossing my fingers, but I think it's definitely put a lot out there for us to analyze and to look at and to hope that changes are made. Um, and I think that they will be. And I, I don't have any, any panic quite really setting in me for the rest of um, the season. I think we're going to be okay. I think the Denver Broncos are going to be okay. It's a tough division, and I know that's a concern, but I do think that they'll be able to figure it out before they hit the Raiders um, in week four. So we've got the Texans this week that the Denver Broncos will be playing, and then the 49ers, both home games. And I do think those are two games that we can – they can really – I keep saying we – I'm not a Denver Bronco, that they can <laughs> shoot out of the cannon and show what they can do. So that is what I am hopeful for. That is what I will be expecting to see. I will stay positive and optimistic on those lines. And I hope that the rest of you do as well, because I think that this is just the start of something great still, even though the outcome was not what we had all been hoping for. But with that said, I really appreciate you guys being here and I appreciate you guys giving your two cents and helping me out today as well. So thank you so much. Hope to just have a different result to chat about next Wednesday morning. But again, appreciate you guys all being here. Have a fantastic Wednesday. I'm Kim Becker here at Beckoning the Broncos. And make sure that you are staying tuned to Mile High Huddle. Make sure you're liking and subscribing over on YouTube. And make sure that you are follow, following us on our social media channels so that you don't miss out on anything. Appreciate you guys all so much. And I will see you next Wednesday.